untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black zombie tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the Scarab God as our commander, a 5-mana 5 5-5 five five legendary creature god, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life and use Cry X, where X is the number of zombies we control. We can also spend 4 mana to exile target creature card from any graveyard to create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie and then when the Scarab God dies, we get to return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So very difficult creature for the opponent to permanently deal with, as we can just replay it for 5 mana over and over, unless they can exile it, at which point we can still play it out of the command zone at an increased cost. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with our creatures, where we've got a ton of zombies and zombie synergies. At 1 mana, Champion of the Perished picks up plus 1 counters whenever another zombie enters under our control, Crib Breaker can tap 3 untapped zombies we control to draw a card at the cost of 1 life. Diagraph Ghoul, a 2-2 comes into play tapped. Dread Wonder, a 2-1 comes into play tapped, can also potentially get it back from our graveyard. Falmar Knight can use the Adventure first to draw a card at the cost of 1 life, and then a 1-1 with Death Touch. And Shambling Gas, when it dies, can make a treasure token to help us ramp or give a creature minus one, minus one. And Stitcher Supplier, when it enters or dies, mills three cards, so perfect for filling the graveyard for Scarab God. Then at two mana, we have Graf Reaver from Crimson Vow, can exploit a creature to destroy a Planeswalker. Jadar makes a 2 2 decayed zombie token every turn. Lazotep Reaver is a 1 2 that's joined by a 1 1 zombie army token. We've got Mire Triton, a 2-1 with Death Touch, that mills 2 cards and gains 2 life. Priest, to go with all our snow lands, can be used as removal. Tainted Adversaries, a 2-3 with Death Touch, can also play it later for more mana, so it enters with plus 1 counters and is joined by Decayed Zombie Tokens. We've got White, a 3-2 that enters tapped, and when a creature dealt damage by White this turn dies, we get to make a 2-2 Black Zombie Creature Token that's tapped, and we get to exile that card as well. Graveyard Marshal, a 3-2, can exile creatures from our graveyard to make additional 2-2 zombies. Undead Augur, a 2-2, saying when the Augur or another zombie we control dies, we draw a card and we lose one life. And a Blade Stitch Scab, a nice Lord, 2-3, giving other zombies we control plus 1 plus 0. And then Metallic Mimic is a shapeshifter, enters a battlefield naming zombie, so it also counts as a zombie. And then future zombies will enter with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on them. Then at 3 mana, Jarolf is another new addition from Crimson Vow, a 1-4 legendary human wizard, saying zombies we control have flying, can also sacrifice creatures to turn them into XX blue zombie creature tokens, where X is the sacrificed creature's toughness. Archghoul of Thraben, a 3-2 zombie cleric from Crimson Vow, and when the Archghoul or another zombie we control dies, get to look at the top card of our library, if it's a zombie, can reveal it and put it into our hand, otherwise we can decide to keep it on top or put it in our graveyard. Diagraph Colossus, a 2-2, enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each zombie card in our graveyard, and whenever we cast a zombie spell, we get to make a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token. Felstinger, a 3-2, with death touch and exploit, so when it enters we can sacrifice a creature. If we do, we get to lose 2 life and draw 2 cards, can even target the opponent to maybe finish them off. Flashback Marauder, a 3-1 zombie that when it enters makes each player sacrifice a creature. Headless Rider, a 3-1 from Crimson Vow, saying whenever Headless Rider or another non-token zombie we control dies, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Liliana's Devotee isn't a zombie itself, but it gives other zombies we control plus one plus so, and at the beginning of our end step, if a creature died this turn, we can pay one on a black to create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. We've got Lord of the Accursed, giving all other zombies plus one plus one, can pay two mana tap it, and all zombies gain menace until end of turn. Midnight Reaper a 3-2, saying whenever a non-token creature we control dies, the Reaper deals one damage to us and we draw a card. Vizier of the Scorpion, a 1-1 joined by another 1-1 zombie army token, saying a zombie tokens we control have death touch. Death Baron, a 2-2, giving other zombies and skeletons we control plus 1 plus 1 and Death Touch. Murder Strider can be used as removal, destroying a creature or planeswalker, and then a 2-3 zombie with a lifelink afterwards. And Gleaming Overseer also makes a 1-1 zombie army, giving zombie tokens we control hexproof and menace. And then Faceless Agent is a changeling, so it has all creature types, including zombie, and when it enters we get to seek a creature card that's a zombie in this case. And then at 4 mana, 
Draugr Necromancer to go with all the snow lands can also provide card advantage when opposing creatures die as we get to replay them. Gravedigger, a 2 2 that gets back a creature from our graveyard. We could technically play Grave Shifter, which might be slightly better when facing opposing copies of Crippling Fear, but I just prefer the art on Gravedigger. We've got Eben Death, a 5 2 legendary zombie dragon with flash and flying, and her stamped, and we can also replay it out of our graveyard if a creature died this turn. Then at 5 mana we've got Grey Merchant, which can drain the opponent equal to our devotion to black, and as you may have noticed our deck is primarily black, just splashing a little bit of blue. Narfi gives all our zombies plus 1 plus 1, can also get it back from our graveyard using our snow mana. And then at 6 mana, Cemetery Desecrator from Crimson Vow, a 4-4 zombie with menace, that when it enters a battlefield or dies, can exile another card from a graveyard, and if we do, we get to either remove X counters from target permanent, where X is the mana value of the exiled card, or target creature an opponent controls gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the mana value of the exiled card as well. Then going over the non-creature spells, we've got some early removal, which also synergizes nicely with the Scarab God, as we can kill opposing creatures and then get them back from the opponent's graveyard. So we've got Blood Chief's Thirst, Fatal Push, and then a 2-mana Feed the Swarm, can also tag enchantments, Heartless Act, and Infernal Grasp. And then Dark Salvation also has great synergy, can potentially make a few zombie tokens, and then give a creature minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn for each zombie we control. And then we've got some Artifact Ramp with Mindstone, Guardian Idol, Cold Steel Heart, and Arcane Signet, as well as at 3 mana Heraldic Banner, naming Black, giving all our black creatures one additional power as well, so plays well with all the zombie tokens we can generate. Then at 4 mana, Necro Duality replaced Reflections of Lejara as another enchantment we could be playing to copy our zombie spells. Crippling Fear, a one-sided sweeper. Liliana can mill more zombies into her graveyard and drain the opponent for two. Can give a creature minus X minus X where X is the number of zombies we control. And the minus three lets us replay zombies out of our graveyard. Can be powerful if we have a lot of mana available. Then we have the 5 mana Liliana, which can make a zombie and mill us for 2. The minus 3 returns a creature from our graveyard and turns it into a zombie. And the minus 7 destroys all non-zombie creatures, so it can also be a one-sided sweeper. We've got a Liliana's Mastery, an enchantment giving our zombies plus 1 plus 1. And when it enters we get a pair of 2-2 two -two zombie tokens, which will get that plus 1 plus 1 bonus right away. Vanquisher's Banner also gives our zombies plus 1 plus 1, and whenever we cast a zombie spell we get to draw a card. Never to Return is more of a 3 mana play, destroying a creature or planeswalker, and then we can still cast Return out of the graveyard thanks to Aftermath, exiling a card from a graveyard and making a 2 2 zombie token. Then Blood on the Snow, another powerful sweeper, either destroying all creatures or all planeswalkers, and returning a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to the battlefield. And then a Liliana Dreadhorde General with the powerful passive ability, letting us draw a card whenever a creature we control dies. The plus one makes a 2 2 zombie, and the minus four makes each player sacrifice two creatures, the ultimate also game winning. And then a mana base has plenty of snow lands to enable our various snow synergies, a couple dual lands, and then a castle as card advantage. And the fetch lands also play well to enable Revolt on Fatal Push and to get additional snow lands for mana fixing. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Ral Storm Conduit. And my hand's okay, we've got some early pressure, Thirst can also attack Planeswalkers. So seems worth a shot. Cribbreaker's nice too. And the Vizier makes an extra token, so good at enabling Crib Breaker. So we've got our card draw engine in play. Opponent is crying, so we don't need to fear a 3 mana sweeper, at least not yet. Alrighty, so could play the Devotee, pump my zombies and just start swinging. Or we can play the card advantage game a little bit longer. Could also discard Narfi to Crypt Breaker, as I can eventually get it back for 3 mana. 
Make a zombie, tap that to draw a card. So a lot of options. Kind of like discard Narfi. Even though being aggressive might be fine as well. Just worried about a sweeper resetting our board, so I don't want to overextend into it. Right, Liliana's not bad. Hit for two. And our opponent's gonna bounce it. I'll just replay it. Expressive iteration to maybe dig for a sweeper. And now we can start diversifying our win conditions with a planeswalker. If I draw a third snow land, we can still get back Narfi, even at instant speed. And Cathartic Pyre finally deals with our Crypt Breaker. There's my snow land for next turn, and then for now, Liliana can plus. There's still Scarab Guard we can leverage. Ton of options. And Creature Land as well. Alright, Storm's Wrath. One of the better answers deals with our creatures and knocks down a ton of loyalty of our Planeswalker. So, what's next? Graph Reaver could also answer Raal potentially. Could play Scarab God. There's only Wash Away to potentially counter it. This can continue plussing. Well, they aren't useful to me alive. Yeah, don't hate Scarab God here. The alternative is Narfi end of turn. But I wouldn't be able to do much else. Could always play Graph Reaver without exploiting, since we have multiple answers to Planeswalkers in hand, so I guess play Graph Reaver, get back Narfi end of turn would have been reasonable too. Sahili to make some chum blockers, although Scarab God can still drain the opponents, Fading Hope as an effective bounce spell. Yeah, that goes back to hand. So now I can use Graph Reaver to maybe kill Sahili. Before they make too many servo tokens with a passive ability. Yeah, treasure map transforms. Our opponent's got a ton of mana to work with now. So can't feel too comfortable. Midnight Clock makes another servo. Jadar, so sadly won't be able to exploit the uh, decay token yet that we get from Jadar. So plus Liliana. <laughs> Wait till you see what I've got planned for you. And then I think I need to deal with Sahili. So could go for bring back Narfi, exploit Narfi to the Graph Reaver, or just exploit the Graph Reaver itself. Narfi is more value, so let's do that instead. And then we also have a creature to block the servo tokens to protect Liliana. Goldspan can finish off my Planeswalker, sadly. The Treasures also play well with Treasure Cove. Hmm, you to they are down to two cards in hand, but not for long. Alright, so the game took a turn for the worse. After that Storm's Wrath, now Rawl. 
So an untapped snow land off the top could be useful. Tainted adversary instead. So I could try and play Scarab God, but I am letting my opponent untap with a Planeswalker, a gold span, a lot of mana. So that seems pretty sketchy. I can try to play Kicked Thirst on either Goldspan or Rawl. Could play Adversary, make some Decayed tokens. So there's a few ways for us to play this. Opponent is a 9. So if I make some Decayed Zombies, then uh, I can maybe get back Narfi, pump the team and get there. Yeah, maybe that's the play. Might as well attack. And uh, probably should go face. The Tormented Prophet to draw more cards. It's easy. Quantum particles, blah blah blah, and then you die. And I think twice, gonna go digging pretty deep. Strike it rich, pretty nice with a gold span in play. So one actual card in hand, think twice in the graveyard. The Emeritus, Strike a Rich, and Electrolyze in Exile. Step one, Strike it Rich. So they still have five mana here. And then we'll see next turn if we want to maybe attack and threaten to get back Narfi at instant speed to pump the team. Or if there's a better play available. Alright, I did draw the untapped land, so we can now also wipe the board with blood on the snow. Although step one, kind of like attacking with the team, see how they block and reevaluate from there. And we'll send face. Could also go after Ral to take him out, and then blood on the snow can deal with creatures. I think this is still better. Now I kind of like getting Narfi back instead. We would kill the Tormented Prophet and deal 6, put the opponent to 3. And I can play a Jadar as well. Opponent does get to untap with Gold Span and Rawl, as well as the Emeritus, so they could draw quite a few cards. But we'll see if they can manage to survive. Probably the most amount of turns I've kept the Gold Span in play and not lost a game yet. So their opponent's got a full grip now. Essentially five mana available. And Goldspan after attacking can make two more. So we went with a more aggressive line as opposed to trying to keep the board in check. We'll see how that pans out. 
Pirate's Pillage. Basically pays for itself with a gold span in play. So yeah, the opponent's deck a lot uh, scarier with the Mythic Rare Dragon. So still 6 mana after attacking. If they hit a Time Warp, we're probably dead. Prismari commands, probably followed by another sweeper here. Can also make a treasure. Yep, so they still have five mana. There is still faceless haven they need to worry about if they wipe the board here. Gold span still in play. So they still technically have two mana. So do they have cheap interaction for Faceless Haven? Aha, uh -huh, Baral is a blocker. Not enough with Bloodchief's Thirst killing it. So their opponent's almost found a line. But I think we will still get it here. Unless there's a Pact of Negation in hand, there is not. And then... Animate Haven. So, very close game indeed. Could have taken a few different lines, but this one just about panned out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Nahiri equipment deck, and our hand seems fine. Got some creature interaction, ways to fill the graveyard to hopefully leverage our commander. So, turn to Priests. Also plays well with uh, Devotee, as we can maybe pay the two to make a zombie at some point. And turn three, could go for Colossus to start making tokens. Arm Scavenger, pretty nice addition to the equipment deck. So it might be worth taking out with Priests before it accumulates too much value, and then play Colossus afterwards. So it picks up a plus one counter. So 4-4, four, four, not bad. And next... Could go for Devotee, could play Reaver to then next turn get more benefit from the plus one plus O bonus. Although Devotee is a little bit more mana efficient in case we draw land next turn. So let's go with the Devotee. Alright, opponent's got the swords for Colossus. It's too bad. I guess the upside of playing Reaver is that if we did trigger the Colossus, we would have gotten an extra zombie right away, so there's still something to be said for uh, playing the Reaver last turn. We are missing double black, so can go champion into a Reaver. So probably just killing the Supplier and smashing. Although I'm not liking this trend of missing my land drops. As our opponent's eventually going to play Nahiri, equip all these things for free, and we're going to be sort of stuck. But it's not like I have any other options available. There's a swamp at least. So opponent keeping up two mana as opposed to equipping is interesting. Can send supplier. 
and then we might want to play champion plus reaver unless a creature died in which case might be able to leverage devotee there might be some pump spells involved too here this is a warrior so they might have that plus two plus two equip something for free but they could have still equipped bone splitter so not sure what's happening here could just be a removal for devotee in which case they get to eat supplier but then i get to fill my graveyard so that's probably okay all right devotee down and then i would like to keep hitting my land drops although going champion into reaver gives me a better board so we'll wait on cracking the clue And then a land could also play Adversary, make a few Decade Zombies to grow Champion. And keep up the pressure on Nahiri. Which is just going to mind us to kill Champion. Alright, so we can at least kill Nahiri. I'll draw first. Probably don't need blue mana. All right, and then the question is if I play Adversary or not. Could draw a card with it later after playing Banner. Although I might go for Scarab God first anyway, and then having the extra zombies worthwhile. So as the dust settles, we finally picked up our fifth land so we can play our commander. The lore hold command deals with adversary. And draws two by sacrificing the equipment. Alright, don't mind playing Scarab God. And then I want to keep hitting my land drops to have more mana to leverage the activated ability here. Put a stop on upkeep to maybe get an additional zombie in play. Mall of the Skyclaves, can let them fly over. And that's a six powered Forge Master. But we get to untap with Scarab God, which is always fun. And there's quite a few creatures to choose from, including, I guess my Priest, which could be used as removal. Alternatively, could try and get some equipment going from the opponent's deck. Maybe hit our own flying equipment off the scavenger. But let's go with uh, Priest instead. Stitcher Supplier, also a fun one, as we can find more zombies to enable Scarab God. And then... Probably fine to keep Wander on top, which we can play right now. And then do I want to draw Mastery? Think I'm better off activating Scarab God. Could have also tried to bottom everything to look for an extra land, so we can maybe double activate Scarab God next turn. Alright, so the pressure is on. And we Nota, okay. Let's see what they hit. Cargon Intimidator. Probably don't want to block since they can pump it. So yeah, take nine. And then upkeep Scarab God. What do we want to go for here? Champion of the Perished. Devotee can pump my team, so maybe that's the play. Could also go for Faceless Agent to seek another zombie. 
And then anything particularly useful? I guess a cold steel heart's kind of like a land. But uh, I guess we'll bottom everything in case we can find a cheap spot removal spell here. Blood Chief's Thirst certainly counts. So now I could use Priest on Winota, and if that works, they're just dead. Can just attack with the team as well. And then we still have Thirst to deal with one of their creatures. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, turn this team sideways here. A resolute strike to move some equipment to Winota, fair enough. Glad I didn't try to use the priest. Scarab God can uh, come back to our hand end of turn. But looks like our other zombie is still enough to cross the finish line. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Nethroi Apex of Death and I'm on Graveyard deck. And my hand's a little on the slow side, no one or two drop. I do like Vanquisher's Banner, but no ramp to play it earlier. So I think we'll try a free mulligan here. Look for something a little more explosive. Alright, Cold Steel Hard on two. Let's take it from there. Right, priest could be scary if they can activate it. So I'm taking a pretty big gamble by playing Diagraph, hoping they can't play two creatures. And then next turn we can start making zombie tokens. I think that's worth it since those zombies will then protect the rest of our team. And they didn't play a one drop, so hopes are they can't play two creatures here. Wall of Blossoms. And a tap land, alright, so we're safe for now. Uh, land is great. So I can go for a Draugr Necromancer to start exiling the opponent's creatures so they cannot uh, leverage Nethroi as much. That seems worthwhile. And now I can maybe sacrifice a zombie token if they activate Priest. Hope to keep hitting our land drops, since we don't lack powerful spells in hand. Old stick fingers can fill the graveyard. And land is great, so how about Metallic Mimic into maybe a Faceless Agent? Although, probably no reason to not attack first. Send a Necromancer. And then next turn, we might play our Lord to pump the team. We could play Scarab God as well to start draining them. And yeah, the Necromancer also plays an important role. So, 7 mana to mutate Nethroi. A run and 7 is gonna start filling the yard. They could also make a tree folk first, but nope, goes for the plus one. Fabor Elder, also nice one as a zero zero that you can essentially get back for free with Nethroi. Cemetery Desecrator could be awesome. Can exile the opponent's graveyard while killing creatures in the process, although missing the one extra land here. Okay. So Lord of the Accursed. Can pump my team to set up a nice attack. Or I can play Scarab God, which helps me scry towards land 6. Which might be more important. 
I guess there is Priest to worry about, since that can also make two mana to then help mutate Nethroi. Although they cannot mutate onto the human, so they would still need access to another creature first. So, a tricky spot. I think we go for Scarab God. And then probably don't mind trading Necromancer for Priests. Something like this. Opponent uses priests, that's fine. Get rid of a zombie token. And those creatures got exiled. So I could replay them here, but I'm happy keeping them in exile. Play Scarab God. Hope there's no board wipe. And then next turn, Desecrator can go to town. Can put an upkeep stop as well in case we want to activate Scarab God. So I hope they won't be able to mutate here. Tapping at the window flashback, that's fine. Finds a clattering auger. And Ren is going to put some lands in play. Alright, that's a lot of lands. So our opponent is set up to use Nethroi next turn. Although, should be able to clean up their graveyard nicely with a Desecrator, maybe even Scarab God eventually. So, no need to activate Scarab Gods, never to return. Probably a fine draw. Keep some lands on top as well, can always reorder them later. And then play Desecrator. Probably killing the Augur, which is their only non-human. Uh, Get rid of World Shaper. And kill the Augur, I guess. Can we just kill our opponent straight up? 6, 9, 10, 11. I guess we can just kill our opponent instead. If we go face and there's no source to plowshares. Alright, we were prepared to fight the graveyard battle here. But uh, I guess killing them also works. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand facing niv Parun. So Fatal Push might not actually be one of our better cards in the matchup, but um, yeah, maybe we should look for something different. This might be a little bit better. Turn 1, Champion. Turn 2, Crib Breaker plus a Tap Land. Take it from there. And then black or blue is an interesting question. I do have more black sources I can draw, so we'll go with blue, even though I won't be able to play Marshall. And sadly, Island on top, but still casts Overseer or Headless Rider at least. Cold Steel Heart on the red. So I should probably play Headless Rider in case of a Red Sweeper that's not Anger of the Gods, so we at least get some tokens in return. Could also start drawing here, maybe go like Overseer, attack with Champion, draw with the other three. That's also reasonable. And hope to dodge a 3 mana Sweeper. At least now Champion and Overseer would survive a 3 damage sweeper, so there's that advantage as well. Opponent's gonna pass, but 
If they're sitting on a bunch of counter spells, they're not going to beat this. Can also start activating Crypt Breaker to make zombie tokens to play around the counter. So, is that what I want to do here? Yeah, maybe. Discard Narfi, which we can eventually get back. Grow Champion that way. Maybe start by attacking. See what happens. Uh, Potent Doss play kicked into the Royal in that case. Still don't have double black, so I wouldn't be able to activate Crib Breaker and replay Champion. Uh, let me start by drawing. See if we can pick up a black source, maybe. And then I can just cast a 3-drop. And uh, I guess Headless Rider is still the pick. So they still need more red mana if they ever want to cast Niv. Replicating Ring will help. And I don't have a great answer to Niv. So... Kind of have to hope that they don't go for it in fear of a removal spell. For now... I can try to play something main phase. Like maybe a champion, which they may let resolve. Then I can tap that to draw a card. And if we draw a swamp, I can still maybe activate Crypt Breaker. Because I assume they have a counter spell in hand, so playing something now would probably get it countered, whereas now that I picked up the Swamp, I can just activate Crib Breaker to get around a Counterspell. Right, startle in that case. I guess we can just cast something. Like an Arch Ghoul. Alright, still hoping to dodge a Sweeper, although at least Headless Rider and Arch School give us a little bit of advantage if they do. So no Niv Mizzet this turn at least. Inscription of Insight to make a 4-4 token. Not a bad blocker here, all things considered. So what's our next move? Can play a couple zombies to grow champion to still get an attack in. Narfi could pump the teams to still allow for a pretty substantial attack. Or we could get the priest down in the hopes of killing Niv next turn if we draw another Snowland. That's also reasonable. There's also Scarab God, although Ponin does still have two mana, so we could expect a counter, which also makes me more in favor of trying to double spell. So let's kick things off with maybe a Priests and see how they respond. It does get rejected unless we pay three. I guess we'll pay three. And then I can draw multiple times here, but I wouldn't be attacking. Except for the zombie army, which has menace. Alright, between the extra draws from Crib Breaker, we should be able to find another snow land so we can kill Niv with Priest. And there's Niv. Although they could have some protection in place as well. Liliana could also be an answer. Still hoping for snow lines. There we go. So, 
Step one, probably play Snow Lion to activate Priest, see if that works. Trigger, trigger. If they can give Niv Hexproof, that would be more problematic. They're just gonna draw to trigger Niv. And take out Crib Breaker. Do I want to respond? Ah, uh, probably. These can all be tapped. And then I'll happily draw land here. If I go Liliana, I can also play another 2-drop. And kill the 4-4. Four four. And Lazatap Reaver, I guess, amasses onto the existing army, so it doesn't make two creatures. So we'll go with White instead. And smash. Bonus at five. And Liliana can also potentially drain them to death. So they need a pretty specific board wipe, a Graven Lore, to try and find one. Even an Anger of the Gods still leaves Champion of the Perished in play. So don't really see them getting out of this. So yeah, we stumbled on mana early, but luckily we had a Crib Breaker to draw us out of it. Demon Bolt kills Whites. That's not going to accomplish much. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Yarok. So Sultai enters a battlefield deck. And our hand's okay, having lots of spot removal is important to deal with Yarok. And then we can rely on our commander to maybe close out the game. Turn to Florahedron. I'm tempted to kill that to prevent some early ramp. Could also just play a Graveyard Marshal here to start applying pressure, but I think we should limit their options for next turn. And then Faceless Agent seems fine here. Next turn we can double spell. Solemn for ramp. That's fine. So trading for the opponent's creatures is a way to set up our Scarab God. So even though Solemn draws a card when it dies, it might not be a bad trade for us. So I could play a Blade Stitch Scab and probably White is fine. Even though Marshall sets up Grey Merchant better, but I don't think I'm going to play Grey Merchant anytime soon. So, I guess for now, Scab. Attack, see what the opponent does. Most likely trades. And sure, I guess we'll play a Graveyard Marshall. And then we can answer Yarok, maybe add white to the board. And then Grey Merchant is looking good. That's going to be Rejuvenator first, so opponent taking a slower approach. That's fair. In that case, we could play Scarab God. Now, we don't want to get Scarab God countered, because then it doesn't go back to our hand. Opponent does step out for Blood Mage. Could exile Graveyards potentially to nerf Scarab God, but typically draws a card. Liliana's not bad. So, what's the play here? 
Blood Mage can trade for my Graveyard Marshal, so probably don't want to offer that particular trade. Although I could Liliana minus two on Blood Mage and then still attack. Kind of like that idea. And then the Rejuvenator wouldn't be able to finish off Liliana by itself. So I feel okay attacking. So now we're ahead on board, still have removal for Yarok, so it hopefully doesn't get out of hand. And a Grey Merchant's also getting better and better. Alright, so let's see if this works. It does. And then I'll play a white as well. Opponent's at 8, so a Grey Merchant could be lethal here. Opponent replays Yarok, 3 mana available. We get to untap. And yeah, let's uh, plus. And Grey Merchants. Drain them for eight. And there we have it. So pretty straightforward game. All right, so we got to see our Scarab God deck in action. And our deck is certainly capable of winning without our commander. But it's a nice curve topper to play those grindier matchups where the opponent might have a board wipe or two. And then Scarab God can eventually get back all our zombies, even the opponent's creatures as well and give us a nice scry effect to find whatever we need. So a fun tribal deck with an interesting twist. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.